Hey everybody, in this video, we're talking about aggregate supply. And before we get anywhere, let's just talk about what is aggregate supply, because guys, I gotta tell you, those two words sound like jargon to me, okay? So let's get to what it actually is. Aggregate production, I'm sorry, aggregate supply is just talking about aggregate production. That is actually true. I like to call it total production. Truly, what is aggregate supply? It's representing the total amount of final goods and services our domestic businesses are producing. Let me say that again. It's representing the total amount of final goods and services our domestic domestic businesses are producing. So that's what aggregate supply is. It's representing production, right? Total production. You can see that right here, a representation of total production. Now, the next thing is at different price levels. Aggregate supply is technically a function. Now, don't be lost on that, okay? All I mean is it's actually a relationship. It's saying, it's telling us, I should say, how much our domestic businesses are gonna produce at every price level. Well, what is the price level? The price level is the weighted average of all prices of all final goods and services. We might just say it's just what, you know, the, it's basically just the level of prices out there in the economy of final goods and services. That's what the price level is, the level of prices out there in our economy. It's just an aggregate measurement, okay, of the prices in our economy. And again, what is aggregate supply? It is telling us how much our domestic businesses are gonna produce at every single price level. So again, it's a function, it's a relationship. It's gonna be represented by an entire line, not a single dot like I have right now. It's represented by a single line. And by the way, that line, that's the short run aggregate supply curve. If I would have done this, that's the long run aggregate supply curve, but don't worry, I'm still gonna get there. So, okay, what is aggregate supply? Well, it's the total production of final goods and services by our domestic businesses. And truly, the aggregate supply curve is representing a relationship, a relationship between how the price level affects how much we are producing, the quantity of AS. Now, here is the thing, guys. When you start thinking, okay, how does the price level affect how much we produce? There's a time aspect that comes into play. We need to say, well, are we talking about the short run, a situation where input prices, like wages especially, have not changed yet, okay? Or are we talking about the long run, when we assume that all our input prices have fully adjusted to the changes in the price level? And when I said all input prices, again, wages are included in that. That's one of the major uh, input prices that we're talking about. So. Let me say that again. We talk about air supply in two forms. There's the short run air supply curve. So when we say, hey, short run air supply, we're saying, hey, this is what's happening to total production when the price level changes during that period of time that wages have not caught up to the changes in the price level. That's the key. That time period when wages are still sticky, right? I like to say lag behind changes in the price level. That's the short run. The long run is a situation where we assume all input prices, including wages, have changed in proportion to the price level. So the price level changed and all our input prices have changed by the same proportion, okay? So that is the difference between the short run average supply and the long run average supply. Now, that was a lot of words. I like visuals, so let's get a visual, okay? So I've got my price level. Remember, we're trying to figure out, hey, when the price level changes, what's happening to total production? And I've gone ahead and put one dot on the graph representing a dot that happens to be on both our short run aggregate supply curve and our long run aggregate supply curve, okay? That's what we're gonna assume about that dot. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change the price level. We're gonna say, hey, there's an increase in the price level out there, okay? So there's an increase in the price level. So my next dot has to be above this current dot. It could be over here, there, there, but it's just gotta be above right now. So then we say, okay, when that price level goes up, when the prices of final goods and services go up, which by the way, means the revenue of businesses are going up. When business revenue is going up, what are businesses gonna do? Are they gonna produce more? And the question for us economists is, well, what's happening to their cost, right? If revenues and costs go up by the same amount, no change in profitability, no change in production. But if revenues go up and costs lag behind, oh, there's profits to be made by producing more. So let's get back to it. Price level goes up. We're in the short run situation where input prices like wages lag behind. They don't change by the same amount, right? Revenues go up, but the costs don't really go up by as much. They're sticky, they're lagging behind. Oh, profit opportunity by producing more. Price level goes up, oh, we will actually produce more. We will produce more. So my next dot might be right there. Oh, okay. And if the price level went up again, we would produce even more than that in the short run, as long as cost of production are sticky or lagging behind. Put another dot. Oh, there we go. Short run 
aggregate supply is upward sloping. The short run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. It's saying that in the short run, when the price level goes up, i.e. revenues of businesses are going up, they will produce more in the short run, i.e. during that time period when their costs have not gone up by as much as the price level. There you go, short run aggregate supply curve long run aggregate supply curve. That's a situation where costs have changed in proportion to the changes in the price level. They've gone up just as much as the revenues have gone up. So again, price level goes up, revenues go up, but costs go up by just as much. There's no profit opportunity by producing more. So when that price level goes up, I'm gonna produce the same amount as I always have. So I have that original dot, that was that original dot, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a different color in here. I'm gonna put a dot right there. That red's gonna represent a dot on my long run average supply curve. And then if the price level goes up again, and we're talking about the long run a situation where costs go up by the same amount, revenues go up, costs go up by the same amount, no profit opportunity by producing more or no losses are gonna be made by producing less. So they're gonna produce the same amount, no, no reason I should say, That's, let's just say no reason to change how much we're producing because revenues and costs have gone up by the same proportion. It's probably a cleaner way to say that dot right there, okay? So connect our dots. So there we go, connect those dots. That is our long run air supply curve. Both of those curves represent total production. Both of them represent total production. They both represent how total production is gonna change when the price level changes, just over two different time periods. One time period is the short run, when costs are lagging behind the changes in the price level, i.e., therefore, we will see this upward sloping. The main reason being wages are sticky. Wages are lagging behind changes in the price level. So you get that upward sloping SRAS, let me kind of smudged right there, keep that connected right there. And then we have the long run total production curve, the long run aggregate supply curve. What is that showing? It's showing, hey, when we get price level changes in the long run, that's not gonna affect our output, has no impact on our output because cost, revenues, cost are gonna change in proportion with the revenue changes in the long run. So no reason to change how much we're producing. Long run aggregate supply, again, aggregate supply, what is it? It's total production, okay? And when we talk about it, we talk about it in the short run and the long run because there are two different types of time frames. One time frame is when costs are lagging behind those changes in final goods and services, the price of the final goods and services. And that other one is the long run, when costs change in proportion to the changes in the prices of those final goods and services. That's the AES curve. It's as simple as that, guys. As I say, watch the video twice and you should own it forever. See you in the next video.